Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good afternoon, everyone. It is Thursday, February the 17th, 2022. It is currently 425 p.m. Central Time. And once again, I am here in the empty sanctuary of Victory Baptist Church. And as always... Victory Baptist Church is still located in the middle of nowhere, Texas. That that hasn't changed. Victory Baptist Church is still in the middle of nowhere, but from the middle of nowhere, I can speak to all of you who live somewhere. And hopefully, whatever I'm doing here in the middle of nowhere has an impact on all of you who live somewhere. Does does that make sense? Or is that, am I just going... Yeah, I'm, I know what you're saying. Just stop and get to the point. I Okay, well, I, I really don't know what the point is. No, I definitely know what the point is today. It should be an interesting discussion. It should be an interesting conversation. Let me paint the picture. Let me, let me explain how we've got to this very moment on this Thursday afternoon in the middle of nowhere. It all started as I was standing behind the pulpit of Victory Baptist Church right here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. It was on Sunday. I was standing there behind the pulpit. I was looking at my notes. I was trying to get everything ready for church. And one of the church members walked through the front door and they stopped at the pulpit and they said, hey, I heard this thing about hundreds, possibly thousands of baptisms being invalid. Have you heard anything about this? I I didn't really understand everything that they were saying. And I'm like, wait, what? What are you talking about? So we kind of went back and forth discussing it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to look a little bit more into this. And it was, maybe it was that evening or maybe it was the next morning. All of a sudden, I started seeing news articles pop up. Thousands of baptisms, possibly invalid. And I'm like, wait, what is going on? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep looking into this. And then I think it was Tuesday night around, it's probably 11.30 p.m., getting close to midnight. I was going through my late night, listened to all of the news podcasts that I've missed. And I came to ABC's uh, World News, uh, Evening News, World News, what is it called? Evening World News, whatever it's called. Uh, but I was I was listening to that. And I made it, what, 18 minutes and 56 seconds into that broadcast. They had been talking about all the typical things, Russia, the Ukraine, all kinds of issues, you know, going on. And um, all of a sudden at the eight minute, 18 minute and 56 second mark, they said the following about baptisms. It's it's not typical that you're listening to ABC's world news, uh, you know, at night and you hear a discussion about invalid baptisms. So clearly... This has become a big story, and, well, this has a lot to do with theology, the Bible, Catholicism. There's a lot here, so let's unpack it. Are you ready? So let's go back. Tuesday evening, I think this originally aired, I think it comes on uh, ABC, what, I think their ABC Nightly News comes on at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. So this is when it originally aired. I didn't hear it. I I heard it in a podcast form. Um, at around 11.30 p.m. And it, this is 18 minutes and 55 seconds into their program. And they're going to talk about invalid baptisms. Here we go. Back here at home and in Phoenix tonight, thousands of baptisms are now invalid because a priest mistakenly used the wrong word. A priest in the Catholic Diocese of Phoenix using the wrong phrase his entire career, mistakenly saying, we baptize you instead of saying, I baptize you. The Catholic Church in Rome indicating they will need to be rebaptized now. Open question tonight about confirmations and weddings that came after. The diocese says he remains a priest in good standing and will help those affected by his mistake. We do have a passing to note tonight. Best now, it was only just a brief mention of it, but the theological implications are pretty massive, especially as it relates to Catholicism, but I think it has a lot to say to us who are not 
Catholic, all right? So we're going to look at this from a Catholic perspective, and then we're going to look at it from a non-Catholic perspective. And I, I, I think there's some important things to consider here. So, so let me give you a little bit more background because um, that was so quick. So let me, I'll, I'll try to summarize what they said just in case you didn't hear it or if it went by so quick. Because I know it's like, wait, that's it? I know when I heard it, I was like, wait, 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 wait. That, that's, that's all you got to say? Hey, thousands of baptisms are invalid. Maybe confirmations are invalid. Maybe marriages are invalid. Okay, next, uh, I mean, you're like, whoa, whoa, slow down. That, that, there's a lot of implications there. So a Catholic priest for his entire career have been, had been saying, we baptize you instead of I baptize you. According to Rome, this makes all of the baptisms invalid. Here, here's another report. This, this was published on February the 15th at 1.29 a.m. At 1.29 a.m. is when this article that I'm currently, uh, that I currently have in my hands was published, right? Here's what it, it's how it reads. Headline, a Catholic priest in Arizona, resigned after discovering he'd incorrectly performed thousands of baptisms for over 20 years. Now, according to what we just heard, he's still in good standing with the church and he's going to fix it. This is saying he resigned. So I don't know if something changed. We'd have to try to put the timeline together. Did he try to resign? And then they were like, no, we don't, we don't accept your resignation. That, that is important to make sure we report it correctly but for our, our for our discussion in this episode, I'm not here to try to put together all of that timeline. I'm here dealing with the fact what I want to deal with. Wait, all of these baptisms are invalid. That has absolute massive implications as far as Catholic theology is concerned, unless they do kind of a, a workaround, which is what I think. Well, I'll explain in a minute. All right, here we go. A priest in Arizona performed thousands of baptisms incorrectly by erroneously changing one word. The error rendered thousands of baptisms performed. All right, someone who's listening live just said, uh, can you imagine how those people feel that have, have, have a loved one who died after the invalid baptism? They can't redo that. That's where I, the person listening already knows where I'm going. <laughs> That's exactly where I'm going to go. But let's work through this, right? So back to the news article. Thank you. Uh, that, that's, 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 that's so important because that's why this has like, to me, this is absolutely massive. The implications of this are, 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 are big to me, all right? So here we go. I got to close all of the pop-ups that are popping up on the screen. All right, here we go. A priest in Arizona performed thousands of baptisms incorrectly by erroneously changing one word. The error rendered thousands of baptisms performed by the Reverend Andreas uh, Arango invalid. No priest may add, remove, or change anything in the liturgy on his own authority, the diocese said. Now, let's stop right there. That is one very... I think interesting and somewhat powerful thing in regards to Catholicism that, Hey, here's how it's supposed to work in church. You can't change it. You can't modify it. You can't do anything. In some ways there, there that's a, in some ways I feel like that's such a positive thing because if you look in the Protestant world, it's a complete free for all people can do change. I mean, it's just, who knows what you're going to, you walk into a church, you don't know what you're going to get. Who knows? Maybe you get a hymn. Maybe you get a Led Zeppelin song. Maybe you get the Beatles. Who knows what you're going to get? Maybe you get a sermon. Maybe you get a drama. Maybe you get movie clips. Who knows what you're going to get? It's a free for all. So at least Catholicism has some control, but you can argue what, what's the value of control if the control is based off, well, fraudulent and wrong doctrine. But it's just interesting to note, hey, they're controlling what is said, even down to the very words. You can't change even one word or it makes everything that you did completely invalid. That, that's, that's, well, we could, we could have a long discussion about that, but I, I just want to at least mention that. All right, now let's continue. A Catholic priest in Phoenix has resigned. Once again, this is saying he resigned, but what we heard on ABC News saying he's in good standing. 
I don't know what the truth is there. We would, we would have to continue to, to, to figure that out. I just want you to notice the difference in reporting. Um, a Catholic priest in Phoenix has resigned after realizing he had been incorrectly performing baptisms for over 20 years, rendering the right, the right invalid for thousands of people. He's been baptizing people for 20 years and every single one of them has been completely invalid. Now, this is very important because as I'm assuming everyone who will listen to this, as you know, in the, in the Catholic system, it's a sacramental system. That baptism isn't simply symbolizing something, it's doing something. And it's doing something of great significance. Let me explain. I'll, I've got the Catholic Catechism right here. I've got the Catholic Catechism. Catholic Catechism, page 320. Page 320, paragraph 1257. All right? Paragraph 1257, page 320, Catholic Catechism. The necessity of baptism... The Lord himself affirms that baptism is necessary for salvation. He has also commanded his disciples to proclaim the gospel to all nations and to baptize them. Baptism is necessary for salvation for those to whom the gospel has been proclaimed and who have had the possibility of asking for the sacrament. The church does not know of any means other than baptism that assures entry into eternal beatitude. This is why she takes care not to neglect the mission she has received from the Lord to see that all who can be baptized are reborn of water and the spirit. God has bound salvation to the sacrament of baptism, but he himself is not bound by his sacraments. You've got to be baptized in order to be saved, you have to have a valid baptism. It doesn't just picture it. It, in fact, helps. We'll just, I'll use this term, produces it. It, it brings about the rebirth. It washes away original sin. Through that, you're infused with righteousness. Remember, not an imputed righteousness. And then uh, your, your journey really begins. Well, if you've got 20 years of people who have invalid baptisms, this is a very important question. They were baptized. But since that baptism, before this news broke, they died. Now, does the Catholic Church go, well, their their intention was good. Their intention was right. So that, that means they're okay. I guarantee you that's how they're going to work it. And here's the reason why. To me, this is the most inconsistent thing, but I've watched this happen so many different times. There are, there are lots of, you've got Catholics who believe baptism is essential for salvation. You've got uh, many within the Church of Christ. You've got lots of different Catholic and non-Catholic traditions where they say, if you're not baptized, you're not saved. But over and over and over again, I've watched these people who make those dogmatic assertions from all kinds of different theological streams, then turn around and go, however, if you intended to be baptized and you died, well, then then you're okay because your intention counts. Well, if you you were on your way to be baptized and then you died, well, at least you were on your way. So in other words, if you intended, if you were willing, then that somehow counts. And that to me, is just complete nonsense. Either baptism is required or it isn't. You can't say it's required. However, here are 37 exceptions that that you that 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 are that allows you to go to heaven if you're not baptized. Where where if if you're going to say the Bible to, bab, if you're going to say the Bapti, the Baptist, if you're going to say the Bible teaches baptism is necessary for salvation. Yeah, I'm getting way ahead of myself. If you're going to say Baptism is necessary for salvation. You can't then immediately when you're confronted with situations where someone died who wasn't baptized, you start making all of the excuses in the world. Go, well, no, no, exemption. Here's an exception. Here's an exemption clause. No, you're all good. It, that, that renders your whole system of theology 
fraudulent. That's like saying you, you must believe in Jesus to be saved. However, here are 47 different ways you can go to heaven, even if you don't believe in Jesus. Hey, you must be baptized. However, here are some exa- situations where you don't have to. And trust me, the Catholic Church does that very thing. You don't believe me? Catholic catechism. All right, here we go. For catechumens, those going through catechism, those are going through confirmation. All right, listen to carefully. Uh, paragraph 12, uh, 59, paragraph 1259. For catechumens who die before their baptism. So here's, here's a, a uh, someone who they're going, they're going through the, uh, conf- they're going through this process. Cate- catechumens, they're, they're learning. They're going through the confirmation process. Um, and a sense confirmation, they're learning per se, because in many cases, uh, confirmation would be they were already baptized as a baby. Now they're going through it, but they're going through this process. They're going through the process of learning about Catholicism, working to they, they can ultimately be enter into the Catholic church, right? If I, if I can explain it that way. For catechumens who die before their baptism, their explicit desire to receive it together with repentance for their sins and charity assures them the salvation that they were not able to receive through the sacrament. Hey, just in the paragraph before, they're like, the church doesn't know. In fact, let me, I can read it to you. All right, Um, I can read it. The church, this is from the catechism, the paragraph, uh, a couple of paragraphs just before the one I just read about the catechumens who somehow can get to heaven. It says here, the church does not know of any means other than baptism that assures entry into eternal beatitude. Hey, we, 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 we don't know of any other way. And then two, a couple of paragraphs later, well, wait a minute now. If you're a catechumen, if you're, if you're in a sense trying to, you're, you're learning and, 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 you know, to work your way to finally being able to enter into the church. Well, if you die before that happens, well, because of your explicit desire to receive it, because of your repentance and because of your love, well, then, dun, 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 magically you receive salvation just apart from the sacrament. Well, that means there, are, there is another way people can be saved apart from the sacrament. All you have to do is desire it or explicitly desire it, repent and love, and you get in. So, so that would literally be works-based, but, uh, you know, yeah, of course. But All right, but wait a minute. There are other, listen to this, paragraph 1261, as regards to children who have died without baptism, the church can only entrust them to the mercy of God as she does in her funeral rites for them. Indeed, the great mercy of God who desires that all men should be saved and Jesus' tenderness towards children, which caused them to say, let the children come to me, do not hinder them, allows us to hope that there is a way of salvation for children who have died without baptism. All the more urgent is the church's call not to prevent little children coming to Christ through the gift of baptism. So, hey, we can't say for sure, but we're basically going to tell you, yeah, if a child dies without baptism, they go to heaven too. I mean, we can't say it, but trust me, that's the way it's handled. That's the way it's viewed. So if you, if you can, if you're a, ba- if you're a child and you die, now I don't know how to what age, you know, is there a magical age where that no longer works, right? So if you're a child, boom, you get in without baptism. If you're a catechumen working to, to enter into the church, you can get in without it. However, it's absolutely required. So trust me, what they're going to do is they'll make an exception clause here. That, that I'm guaranteed this is the way it's going to be handled. Well, your loved one was baptized by this priest and died. Well, because their desire was for it, then it counts. Well, then you're really making, you're invalidating your entire doctrinal system. You're invalidating... The invalid baptisms and the way they handle them will invalidate the entire system. It will be interesting to see how this plays out. I've been looking for Catholic discussions about this story, and so far I haven't found them. I didn't do any looking today, so I'm assuming they're probably out there. EWTN, Nightly News, The World Over. There's a number of Catholic programs 
and I'm 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 sure they're going to be discussing this, and I want to hear what they what they have to say. I I my my guess is they're going to find a way to 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 excuse it, and they're going to say, well, it it counts, which to me will invalidate their entire the- theology. Either it's required or it's not required. To me, they invalidate their entire theology in the catechism itself. Hey, the church doesn't know any other way. Well, except for these two ways. If you're a catechumen, you get in. If you're a baby who dies, well, I mean, we can trust that Jesus will probably save them. I mean, we can't be 100% dogmatic, but we're going to just kind of put this out there like like you can be assured of it. Okay, well, why not just make exceptions for everything? Why don't you just make exceptions for anything and everything? If salvation is just as easy as is that we're able to create exceptions to get people into heaven, then I don't, I've seen, look, I've seen non-Catholics do the same thing. Well, if there's someone out there and they've never heard the name of Jesus, they go to heaven. Okay, well, if that's your theory, then let's burn all the Bibles and shut down all the churches and end all Christian podcasts so that they can never hear about Jesus so that everyone goes to heaven. So, like, once you start making exceptions, well, then the exception should become the rule so that we can get everyone to heaven. Like, whatever exceptions you make, like, this person will go to heaven, this person goes to heaven. This, well, okay, well, then just, if, if everyone can get to heaven without salvation and without Jesus for these exceptions, why don't the exceptions then just apply to anyone and everyone and we just teach universalism and everybody gets into heaven? It's like, there are, there, these are exceptions, but they don't count for everyone. That makes, that doesn't make any sense to me, all right? So that, there, there's, there's why this is a big story, is it should make everyone scared to death that they're not going to go to heaven. But I'm telling you, they will ultimately invalidate, in my mind, the theology that they teach by finding a way to make sure that everyone goes to heaven, all right? They go on to say here, so, uh, so the, it's been rendered, you know, thousands of baptisms have been rendered invalid. As he administered the ritual, the priest would say, we baptize you in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. But the correct wording is, I baptize according to the Vatican's instruction. All right. Um, no one, including priests, may add, remove, or change anything in the liturgy on his own authority. Um, they go on to add that he didn't believe that the priests had, inten- had intentions to harm the faithful or deprive them of the grace of baptism and the sacraments. Still, the official diocese of Phoenix website said that, that the one word alteration means that all of the baptisms he had performed until June 17th, 2021 are presumed invalid. The diocese also called those who believe the priests had incorrectly bad baptize them to submit their contact details to receive the proper right. Now, so here's the thing. So if you're still alive, contact them so that you can get get the, the valid one. Well, then that means anyone who died had the invalid one. But if you say that they somehow are saved, well, then who cares if they got the invalid one because they still got the valid benefits from it. And if they got the valid benefits from it, then how is it invalid? In other words, hey, well, they intended it, so they got the valid benefit from it. No, if you, this would have to mean that there are people who literally died outside of a state of grace. They didn't even make it to purgatory. Uh, they, 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 it's just like, no, you need, you need the, it's invalid, but we're going to find a way to make it valid. I, 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 oh, it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. In an open letter, the priest apologized for his error and announced that he had resigned as pastor of the St. Gregory Parish in Phoenix as of February 1st. It saddens me to learn that I have performed invalid baptisms throughout my ministry as a priest by regularly using an incorrect formula, he wrote. Now, it's interesting. So nobody ever caught on that it was using the improper. So, so all of those Catholics, no, nobody was like, I think you're saying it wrong. No, nobody bothered to raise their hand and go, I think we're doing this wrong. Uh, that, well, sadly. Sadly, it's not a Catholic problem. That's a problem in just Christianity in general, but that's, that's a whole different subject. Uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit and communion with the Diocese of Phoenix, I will dedicate my energy and full-time ministry to help remedy this and to heal those affected, he added. According to the Catholic News Service, the priest previously served in parishes in Brazil and San Diego. The diocese told USA Today that he, that he had administered thousands of baptisms throughout his ministry. So that would be all of those other places are invalid too. 
Catholic baptisms involve water being poured on a person's head to signify that they have been purified and are now part of the church's. No, that's not. Okay, come on. Okay, secular news. They're not signifying. They're actually, it's something's actually happening. It's not, it's not to, to promote it. Uh, so uh, someone listening live just said, bet you there are th- uh, lots of priests <laughs> freaking out right now because they're doing something similar. I just bet, I bet this isn't a one case thing. That That's an interesting, that's, that's interesting. It'll be interesting if, if all of a sudden we're like, there's hundreds of churches who've been doing it wrong. Because for him to just do it over and over and over, you just, yeah, that, 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 that's interesting. So they, they kind of, they kind of, they, they state this wrong here by saying that it signifies something. It, it's not signif- it's not symbolizing something, it's doing something, all right? Uh, typically uh, performed on infants and are considered a requirement for Catholic salvation. Yes, they're considered a requirement. Despite the error, so, uh, some St. Gregory Catholic Church members have launched a petition asking that the priest stay on as pastor of the church. As part of his pastoral leadership, uh, the priest re- reinvigorated the church community by renovating its facilities, giving parishioners and faith seekers a spiritual home that is open to all, he said. The St. Gregory community will never be the same without him. The priest's blunder was not the first time a one-word alteration has affected baptisms in the U.S. In 2020, the Reverend Matthew Hood in Detroit realized while watching a family video that the deacon who baptized him as a baby also used the wrong phrase of we baptize you. Oh, there you go. The person listening. So this has happened before. Um, the discovery resulted in Hood being rebaptized and reconfirmed and subsequently reordained. The mistake also affected the validity of the sacraments that Hood had previously performed for his parishioners. The Archbishop of Detroit apologized on behalf of the local church and attributed the discrepancy to human error. Now, there's a lot we could talk about here. All right? There's a lot we could talk about. And I know that they will try to make some kind of an exception. They're going to try to work around this some way to ensure that you know someone who died, trust me, they magically got to heaven. They're going to figure some way out to work around it. Because, I mean, you see it right there in the catechism, doing it for catechumens and for, uh, for babies. Uh, you, 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 you see that same thing at work. And I've just seen it so many different times. You'll be talking to someone and say, baptism is required. I'm like, so I was in the military. If we're on the battlefield and I present the gospel to someone, And they're like, I believe in Jesus. And then five seconds later, they got blown up because of an artillery shell. Do they go to heaven? Well, yeah, because they didn't have the opportunity. Well, now you're making exceptions. It's either it's required or it's not required. Which is it? Okay, so I, I already, that already just drives me crazy. But here's what I want you to think about. I want you to really think about this. The argument, okay, I want you to think about this from this perspective. There are two radically different views when it comes to the life of a Christian and the life of a church. There is the sacramental view, which believes things like the Lord's Supper and baptism is a sacrament, which typically is defined. Now, I know sometimes sacrament is just used by people and I don't think they ever really think about what the term means. I've known uh, people who definitely don't go to a sacramental church refer to the Lord's Supper and baptism as a sacrament. And I'm like, when When did you start going to a sacramental church? Well, what do you mean? I'm like, so you believe that God's grace is imparted through baptism? And they're like, absolutely not. I'm like, then why are you calling it a sacrament? Typically a sacrament, when I was a Lutheran, I was taught that a sacrament is defined as a visible means of grace, that through something visible, like a baptism or partaking of the Lord's Supper, God's grace is imparted to us through those things. That's how I was taught as a Lutheran. I've got, uh, I've got Luther's, ca- ca- or Luther, Luther's Catholic Catechism, Luther's Catechism right here, and we could go through reading what he says about baptism and the Lord's Supper. It imparts grace. It w- washes away sins. It, it, it's, you know, it's for, for even a Lutheran, you baptize a baby and then you hold up that baby and say, welcome everyone to, and if it's a boy, to brother so-and-so who's now a part of God's family or sister so-and-so. Now that child is considered saved because they had some water put on its forehead. All right. So those are, that's a sacramental system. 
And typically the sacramental system, if you accuse it of you're, you're having salvation according to works, right? So if I get baptized, I can be saved. If I take the Lord's Supper, then I get forgiveness of sins. That's workspace. And t- typically the rebuttal is absolutely not. That's a work of God. It's not a work you do. It's a God that, a work that God does upon you and in you through this visible means. It's the, the sacrament is a means of grace. It's not a work you do, right? That, that sounds so wonderful and that sounds so great, but think about it. What does it say in a sacramental system? What does it say if that is a means of salvation and it can be invalidated by a mistake a human makes? It can be invalidated by a wrong word. It can be invalidated by so many different ways, then that requires that not that this means of grace is then only valid based off how people handle it, speak it, involved in it. That takes, I mean, you're literally taking the means of salvation and placing them in the hands of people and they can be invalidated if not done correctly. You're taking the means of salvation and saying the only way you get this out, like, for example, if you say baptism is required for salvation, the only way you can get saved is you have to, well, you've got to find the church and you've got to be baptized and you have to be baptized correctly, right? For example, some may say baptism is required. Some may say baptism is required for salvation, but some, especially within the Protestant world, would argue that an infant baptism is invalid, all right, so baptism is required, but it must be a proper baptism. So if it's not, if there, if a baby was baptized, that didn't count. No, 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 no. You, you got to do it this way. Okay, so, so, all right, so I got to, not only do I have to be, or, or they may say sprinkling, I should say, sprinkling is invalid, right? So if, you, if you're baptized as a baby, that doesn't count because you have to believe first, okay? So they, they make it a believer's baptism. However, if you're a believer and are baptized, you're not saved if you believed and were baptized incorrectly, like if you were sprinkled. It's invalid. If you were baptized in the name of Jesus, not in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it's invalid. Many oneness Pentecostals would say if you're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, your baptism is invalid. Now, once you attach the baptism as being a requirement for salvation, you're literally saying the means of salvation can be invalidated if one little thing goes wrong. That places salvation into the control and the hands of people, not into the control of God. And if you think about it, if those who are sacramental are are consistent, if, if the sacrament is actually a work of God, then how can I invalidate it? In other words, if, if the sacrament of baptism is a work of God, how can the priest invalidate it because he didn't he used the word we instead of I? Isn't it God doing the baptism? No, I'm not saying you shouldn't use the right words, but why would that invalidate God's grace being received through the sacrament? So the sacramental system just turns into a very humanistic thing, works-based, controlled by people. Now, there's another view of church that we'll we'll refer to it as a non-sacramental or an ordinance-based concept. And this idea is, no, baptism is symbolic. It is symbolic of salvation. It symbolizes our salvation. It doesn't produce our salvation. Now, some within the Protestant world would argue that baptism doesn't symbolize salvation because they will baptize babies who they know aren't saved. They will say it doesn't save them, but it makes them a part of the covenant family. You'll get this within the Presbyterian world. And I'm always like, wait a minute. So it doesn't, it can't be picturing salvation because the kid's not saved. You don't even know if the kid's going to be saved, but you believe it places the covenant sign upon said child. And now the child is a part of the visible body of Christ, even though they're not saved. And then when they get saved, they don't have to get rebaptized. So I, I, at that point, baptism is just a symbol of a covenant. It doesn't have anything to symbolize with salvation. That that one falls apart in my mind just as well. 
But in the ordinance camp, those who, who hold to an ordinance view is that baptism is an ordinance. And we simply do that to, to symbolize the salvation we have experienced and to be a witness. That the Lord's Supper is an ordinance where we remember the death of Jesus Christ by partaking of the Lord's Supper correctly. It's not a means of grace. That is an ordinance-based versus a sacramental-based. Well, the sacramental-based, I, I think we see in this story some possible issues. You can invalidate an entire sacrament by just messing it up. Now, in the ordinance side, this is very important, you can invalidate a baptism as well on the ordinance side. But here's the difference. It doesn't invalidate your salvation. It doesn't invalidate God's grace. Like as a Baptist, I believe that there are some baptisms that are invalid. If you're baptized by a one as Pentecostal and you're baptized in the name of Jesus and not baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, I believe that's invalid. If you're baptized as a baby, I believe that's invalid because I don't believe that that signified or symbolized salvation because you were not saved. I believe if you're baptized via sprinkling, that is invalid because I believe baptism is by immersion. So I do do believe it's invalid, but guess what? It did not invalidate. Your salvation, because salvation is by God's grace. It's not based on something you do. It, see, from the ordinate side, we can say, well, that's invalid. That's, that's invalid. That's the wrong way to do the Lord's Supper. That's the wrong way to be baptized. But it doesn't destroy God's grace. It doesn't destroy salvation. It just destroys that it no longer, it no longer showed the picture that it was supposed to show or demonstrate. So in invalidating it in an ordinance system, you just invalidated the symbol, the picture, and you can redo it and it doesn't, I mean, your salvation is still secure. Your salvation is not tied to a, a ritual or to a, well, what they would call a sacrament. It's not, it's not, it's not restricted to an ordinance Your salvation is based off faith in Christ, not, oh, well, I did this ordinance, I did this, I did this. And so we both sides believe that something can be invalidated, but in the ordinance side, it doesn't, it's not a good thing. You want to fix it, but it has no impact on one's salvation. But in a sacramental system, if you believe something can be invalidated, it has eternal consequences unless you're going to make exceptions, which invalidates then your very doctrine of it being a sacrament and being required. If it's a sacrament and if it's required, then any invalidation of said sacrament invalidates God's grace, therefore putting someone in jeopardy of eternal separation from God. That's what this story to me is about. I know they're going to make exceptions. I guarantee you they're going to make exceptions. I could be a, I could be so wrong, but they're going to be like, hey, you need to be rebaptized. But if, oh, but my, you know, but my father, he died. Well, you know, I'm telling you, they're going to do a workaround just like they do so for catechumens and they try to do so for babies. It, it makes their entire system invalid. It, it, it makes no sense. Like, if you're going to say it's required, then stick to your guns. It's required. And if it can be, and here's the thing, if you can work around it, then they're not really invalidated, are they? In other words, if someone was baptized by this priest, you say the priest, the baptism is invalid, but somehow you then find a way to say that those people went to heaven or at least went to purgatory, right? Well, then you, they didn't really invalidate anything. If they invalid, invalidated it, then the baptism is completely meaningless and the person died as an unbaptized person. They did not receive the sacrament of baptism. Original sin was not washed away. They were not infused with the righteousness of Christ. And so anything that they did, they, they were not doing it had anything to do with Christ because they, they're, in a sense they were outside of Christ. You ha- would have to be consistent there. But they're, I've already shown you they're, they're not consistent. And well, well, I'm going to continue to follow the story because I want to hear Catholic Catholics discuss it. 
I'm, it's going to be interesting if we find some and go, well, these, these, these people, they, they died outside of God's grace. I, I'm going to be interested to see if any actually say that. I, I, I can almost guarantee they're going to find a way to, to, to get a, 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 a work. They're going to do a workaround. And I think that workaround destroys their entire system. And if, if you hold to a sacramental system, and a sacrament can be invalidated simply because of someone's mistake, error, then you're placing salvation and you're connecting it literally to a ritual, to something that someone does, and you're putting it in the power of people who administer said sacrament, which destroys then really a salvation by God's grace alone. It's like, no, I need... You may say it's by God's grace because I know sacramental people say, no, 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 no. We believe it's by God's grace. But if that grace is so restricted and it can be invalidated that easily or nobody even can get that grace unless they find a church and go to you to get it, that that to me seems massively problematic. That, that seems like a very workspace system controlled by man. That that's some of the concepts I'm going to throw out in this discussion. All right. There's much more I could say. I hope that was beneficial. Um, there's so many different directions I could go with this, so many different directions, but I want you to at least have the basic concept of a sacramental system and an ordinance-based system. As a Baptist, I'm an ordinance-based. I was a Lutheran, sacramental-based. I needed those, I needed the sacraments. I needed the sacraments. Uh, now, Lutherans, they, they, they said, now, that they, they make, they, put it this way. It's weird what can invalidate a baptism or not invalidate a baptism. Like Lutherans, I, my, I didn't have to be rebaptized because I was baptized by immersion in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So for them, as long as I was baptized in the, in the name of the Trinity, then it didn't matter if I was immersed or if I was sprinkled. So I was good to go. I was good to go. So I didn't have to be rebaptized. Um, but if I'd have been baptized by one as Pentecostal, then my baptism would have been invalid. It, it's really, it's like there's, everyone has all of these rules of what invalidates it. But see, if it would have been invalid, then I would have had to have been baptized because I, I, my, my salvation was connected to my baptism. And it's just funny that in a Lutheran system who believes it's sacramental would argue that my baptism and a non-sacramental church, because I was baptized in a Baptist church, that it was valid. <laughs> and so in that particular case, see, it's valid because God is the one who is administering grace to me. It's just so weird. It's so weird the way it works. In fact, I've seen Lutherans do this. Well, I was baptized when I was 10 in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, but I clearly wasn't saved. Uh, I clearly didn't know what I was doing. And I've seen Lutherans go, well, okay, well, you were still, you, you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So it's valid. Like, how can it be a valid baptism? So are you telling me that I was actually saved when I was 10? No, I, I wasn't baptized when I was 10, but I'm saying if this occurred this way. Um, you're telling me that, I, that, that God actually saved me then, even though clearly I wasn't saved by any way of even understanding salvation? I don't even know if I truly even know who Jesus was. Well, yeah, it was a valid baptism. Sometimes it gets so inconsistent. Like, no, that's an invalid one. No, that's a valid one. Well, and it's like, wait, no, so God, did God save me? Did he not? Save, like, how does it work? And, uh, and it just shows you how weird the whole thing can get because you're literally tying salvation to someone being baptized correctly or incorrectly. And it, it, that, that to me makes salvation, how do we say this? That, that ties salvation to the church, not to Christ. You need the church in order to be saved. You need the church in order to be saved. Makes the church the one controlling salvation. I'm not saying that that's the intent. I'm not even saying that that's the way it would. Now in the Catholic system, they would say that, you know, the, or, it was very common in earlier Catholicism to say there's no salvation outside of the Catholic church. Now they've kind of backed away from some of those claims, but th th those were very common claims. 
but and even in many Protestant churches, like you've got to be baptized. Well, where, who can baptize me? Are you saying anyone can? Now, sometimes they'll try to say anyone can, but then that destroys it being a church ordinance. And if it's a church ordinance, then I have to be at the church. So then salvation is connected to the church. And I'll just throw this one out there as well, since we're talking about invalid baptisms. And this is somewhat controversial because it's such a common practice in 2022. I've seen it over and over and over. It's it's very popular in social media. Someone makes a profession of faith. And instead of being baptized by an elder or pastor, they'll be baptized by their dad or their mom or their brother or their sister. And I have to go, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. So just anyone can baptize? Anyone can? Now, of course, does that invalidate the symbol? Is that is that acceptable? Does that invalidate it? Does that destroy it from being a church ordinance? There, there's been some discussion about that as well. So again, if it's sacrament and it invalidates it, it has different ramifications. If it's an ordinance base and it has a different, uh, and invalidates it, the consequences are nothing near as serious. But I've seen those who make it required play some really, really loose games with it. All right, I'll stop right there. You can email me your thoughts about this very important subject. I'm sure we'll be talking about this again. So I just wanted to kind of just throw out thoughts here, do a little bit of like dogmatic kind of, or more like teaching, letting you know at least what the Catholic system says. But um, the real goal here was just to throw out lots of ideas to get you thinking about this story, because I guarantee we're going to hear more about it. I guarantee you. And then we'll, then we'll take the future news stories and maybe go into more detail and really break this down. But if you have any questions in regards to anything that I've said, email me, newsif at yahoo.com, or of course, you can talk about it in the Discord channel. All right, I'm going to stop there. I'll be, I think I'll be back here shortly. God bless.